How does art come into existence? We know, of course, that an artist makes it. But what makes them do that? And we are not asking what their end goal or motivation is. It is irrelevant to this discussion whether they do it because of the need for artistic expression or the need for money and fame. What we are tackling here is the moment of creation of art. This spark that gives birth to an artistic idea, the artist then proceeds to create. The inspiration. Inspiration is one of the most elusive concepts of the artistic process. In literary theory, we often discuss how literature is constructed, how the meanings of a piece of art play off of each other to create an experience for the consumer. In criticism, we mostly discuss how the piece of art, the novel, the movie, the poem, the play, the short story and so on are put together. We examine their parts, try to deconstruct them in order to better understand how they work to find greater appreciation for them, to maybe make someone else appreciate the artistic endeavor more by pointing out things we noticed which they may have not. Criticism and analysis is a great tool for expanding the context in which a piece of art exists. Sometimes the analysis gives clarity to the consumer by breaking down the structure of a complicated movie plot. Other times it points out aesthetic elements to give the consumer of the analysis the opportunity to appreciate them in greater detail than they had during consuming the artwork. The problem with analysis and criticism, at least regarding our subject of inspiration, is that it deals with the product and its process of construction, but not with the moment of creation. Lars von Trier's 2018 movie The House That Jack Built is a two and a half hour long exploration of a serial killer's mindset. In the course of the movie we see how Jack, the titular serial killer and architect, is introduced to us by showing five of his so-called incidents of him killing his victims. These incidents are accompanied by a voiceover commentary of Jack and Wurge, an elderly man to whom Jack explains his motivations. It is clear that Jack suffers from all kinds of mental issues, from narcissism to OCD, from egotism to impulsiveness. In one particular scene he holds up these conditions on cue cards, as if to say that just being aware of them doesn't get to the root of the problem. If we look at the movie as some kind of critical analysis of Jack's killings, then these labels are a critique of analysis itself. Sure, we can easily name the motivations of the killings and the mental background which led to them, but it doesn't change the fact that we are still baffled by the moments in which Jack decides to kill his victims. It is hard to emphasize with a monster like that. Even Jack is unsure as to why he is doing it. He is aware what he is doing and what the end goal in his mind is, but he cannot grasp the moment, the inspiration for it either. We are introduced to Jack's other side as well. He is an architect who wants to build his dream house. However, he struggles with it over the course of 12 years. He simply can't put his mind to it like he does with the killings. He lacks the inspiration for it. Everyone who has ever tried to create some type of creative work knows that inspiration cannot be forced. It is so elusive and intangible that it escapes definition. It needs to be pointed out that inspiration is not the same as motivation. Motivation can be defined as the driving factor for actions, willingness and goals. It is what drives the artist to create his work of art once inspiration hits. Inspiration, however, cannot be so easily defined. We could say it's an unconscious burst of creativity, and that's all. English psychologist Graham Wallace in his book The Art of Thinking proposed a model of the creative process that includes inspiration. According to Wallace, every creative process has four stages, preparation, incubation, illumination and verification. 
Preparation is the stage in which we gather all the knowledge needed. It is basically our education about the subject. Wallace views preparation as being something we can consciously control by setting our mind to learning and studying. In von Trier's movie, this would be Jack's formal education to become an architect. He has all the knowledge and the skills to build a house, so once inspiration hits, it will be possible for him to express it. The fourth stage, verification, is also controllable by our conscious efforts. After inspiration hits us, we are left wondering about what just emerged from the depths of our minds. We think about it and try to test the validity of the idea. The second stage, incubation, is the stage of a creative thinking process in which we step away from the problem we are trying to solve. Wallace argues that this is achieved by voluntary abstention from consciously thinking about the problem. According to him, this abstention can take a form of conscious mental work on other problems or in relaxation from all conscious mental work altogether. In other words, once we have acquired knowledge for solving a problem in the preparation stage, we voluntary or involuntary step away from it in the incubation stage. In the movie, Jack's problem to solve is the creation of his dream house. As we already said, he has all the skills and the knowledge necessary. His preparation stage is done. The murders he is doing can be viewed as the incubation stage of his creative process. He is actively keeping his mind from thinking about the problem by murdering people. Wallace, later in his book, argues that between the two options of incubation, the first one being to concentrate on other mental work, and the second one being absolute mental relaxation, it is evidently better to pick the second option. Exercising, walks through the woods and other physical activities that don't require a lot of mental gymnastics are the best for spending this incubation stage. If this sounds familiar, it is basically an argument for procrastination. However, even in 1926, when Wallace wrote the book, he knew about the dangers of promoting procrastination to his readers, as something geniuses do to solve problems. He writes that if there is no hard work put in the stages of preparation, that is to say the acquiring of knowledge, and the verification stage, the process of validating one's ideas, procrastination will lead to nothing more than wasted time. If we take Jack's murder spree as his incubation stage, as something he actively does to keep his mind from thinking about the problem of his dream house, then we need to take a look at how the fourth stage of illumination is presented in the movie. Illumination, according to Wallace, is the most uncontrollable of all stages. It is the unconscious and instantaneous flash or click that happens once the incubation stage reaches its conclusion. It is what we call the inspiration. In the last act of the movie, Jack is trapped in a corner, surrounded by corpses of his victims in an industrial freezer with the police closing in on him. In a flash of inspiration, after Verge asks him whatever happened to his plan to build his dream house, Jack suddenly knows the solution to it. He uses the bodies of his victims and arranges them to form a house. Albeit a bizarre take on the process of creativity, it is nothing less than a depiction of the moment of inspiration. In their 2016 paper Imitation, Inspiration and Creation, Cognitive Process of Creative Drawing by Copying Others' Artworks, Takeshi Okada and Kentaro Ishibashi conducted experiments in jumpstarting creativity. They made artists copy other artists' works, after which they told them to create an original work of their own. These experiments revealed that deep encounters with unfamiliar artworks, whether through copying or prolonged observation, change people's cognitive representations of the act of drawing to produce novel artwork. Or in other words, the artists left the stage of incubation more easily and proceeded to the illumination stage. They got inspired. It is a murky territory when we talk about being inspired by other people's art when creating our own. 
Where does being inspired end and outright copying start? Von Trier has no problem borrowing motives from other works of art. References to Dante's Divine Comedy in the narrative and even other artistic mediums in the visual representation are crystal clear. Von Trier sees art as an endless process of combining everything that came before in order to make something new. The famous quote, good artists copy, great artists steal, which ironically enough is attributed to a lot of different people throughout history, describes this view on art perfectly. We could argue that Jack in the movie sees his life's purpose in building his dream house. While he is stuck in the stage of incubation, he literally steals the lives of others which leads him to finding a way out of his uninspired rut. Killing people gives him the inspiration, i.e. the material that enables him to finally create his artwork. Von Trier delivers a vulgar narrative on the artistic process, one that in itself is a piece of art that doesn't shy away from pastiche and intertextuality from stealing from the greats in order to add on to the everlasting human need for creativity. Jack, in the end, pays for his sins. He cannot circumvent the abyss of hell. His inspiration was pure, but he failed to examine its virtue. He forwent the last stage of verification. Inspiration doesn't discriminate between good and evil people. We ourselves have to be the judges on that. Simply creating art, even great one, doesn't absolve us from our sins, as it shouldn't. Thank you for watching.